Hey guys, Ashby at Ashby Farms, and today is a part three of a series of building commercial beehive equipment for yourself. Of course, uh, I'm building equipment that lasts 20 years is my goal. Of course, not all of it will, but um, we're building high quality equipment. I'm building the bare minimums that the bees need, but I'm building the equipment really quality to last. Uh, we're dealing with a true one inch thick board that I have milled um, from a friend of mine, Redding Sawmill in Prospect, North Carolina, for a fraction of the cost that we would get wood from Lowe's. Sometimes uh, it's easier just to buy your beekeeping equipment from your small beekeeping stores. Bailey Bee Supply in Hillsboro, North Carolina is fantastic to deal with. David's a good friend of mine. Uh, I would recommend you go there if you don't feel like you're up for the challenge. But hopefully me giving you dimensions in this, maybe you'll say, I wanna give my hand a go at some woodworking and try to build our, your own. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, all of these dimensions are for my equipment. So make sure that your dimensions translate to your equipment that you're gonna build. That's something to keep in mind. Uh, however, the dimensions I'm using today uh, fit specifically my equipment. We build our 10 frame boxes uh, about a half an inch wider. So we need to accumulate for that on our pallets. And we run, we don't run a bottom board. We run two 10 frame hives, a 10 frame box here, a 10 frame box here and I'm gonna discuss dimensions and why I do certain things. So these were our Gen 1 first go rounds and man, did I screw up and it turned out to be a blessing. Sometimes they're a curse and sometimes they're a blessing. What you'll notice here is a quarter inch wide gap all the way down. And the reason being is I got in a hurry and started building with wood that wasn't fully cured yet. And it was only about three months out of the sawmill. And after we put this together, this board and this board shrank this way and pulled apart an eighth of an inch each, leaving a quarter inch gap all the way down the board. The blessing there is it allows for extra airflow. The bees can defend it. It's on the bottom of the hive. It is still small enough that mice cannot get in. You'll notice there's five pieces. One, two, runs the full length, three, four, five pieces. They are only three eighths thick because three eighths is B space. If you make them seven sixteenths, which is the next size up, a mouse can walk right in the front door. You'll notice we have a three eighths gap. And now because of that, I don't have to go around and put mouse guards on all of our hives. I'm building my hives with a future thought of maybe having a thousand or 1200 hives. And how do we do that? I don't want to have to put 1200 mouse guards on in the fall and take 1200 mouse guards off in the spring. We go ahead and build them so that there's only a three eighths gap. There's plenty of room for the bees, seven inches wide right here. And the bees can come and go and it leaves enough airflow through the hive to breathe in winter and in summer. Total width from here to here is 34 and three eighths. So remember my boxes are 17 and an eighth wide. So that's 34 and a quarter. And I attribute that they don't always match up perfectly. And so that's why we run a total width of 34 and three eighths end to end. Turn it around on its side here. This is a true two inch by four inch. Two by four is their special milled for me. Uh, this year we're going to a 1.5 times four inches. And it's important to keep everything four inches so that when we stack them on a truck, like five singles tall, that they're not all wompy jaw in different heights. Um, everything we deal with is a one in, in one inch increment. So this is one inch boards. This is one inch boards. Even this is a one inch wide piece run across the table saw at three eighths of an inch. There. So our two by fours, of course, is two inch by four inch, 22 total inches. The reason I do that, I want a one inch space so that if we end up stacking them on a truck, you've got one inches of air gap for air to flow in and hives that are being transported in future years still have airflow right here. Um, you'll notice that this is set back a half an inch. That's because the dimensions of the box here to here's 21 inches, but of course the boxes are only 20 inches, so they end up setting perfect. Some commercial beekeepers run W clips here and here, but then they have to align with the centerpiece down below. I don't plan on moving a whole lot of hives for the most part. We are stationary beekeepers, 
Uh, on the bottom side of this, got two of those six inch wide boards. Uh, again, length doesn't matter. I'm, I'm putting these together with three inch ring shanks out of a, uh, a nail gun, like an air compressed nail gun. And then these things go into the wax tank and get wax dipped. And let me tell you what, they are heavy. Uh, this thing probably weighs every bit of 35, 40 pounds each. So that's another reason why is I don't, it, we're still doing everything manually. Eventually, uh, I'm going to have an operation like Ian Stepler. It's kind of who I'm mimicking. Um, so, the, and we secure these down, not with glue, but with narrow crown staples, you know, four or five, they're like one and a half inch by quarter inch narrow crown staples. Um, that makes this total length on this piece, 20 inches. Same on this one. 18 and eighth. Um, and also this piece right here is two and three quarter inches wide. That's a wrap on our part three, how to build your own equipment beekeeping series. Um, if you've enjoyed our content, please comment, like below, subscribe. When you interact uh, with me on YouTube, it helps the out YouTube algorithm find me as a content creator for beekeeping stuff. So until our next episode, y'all have a great day. I'm Ashby with Ashby Farms.